Police say he is the killer. Today, a frail Freddie Powell made a court appearance before a Jefferson County judge. Powell is accused of killing two-year-old Kateria Blackburn and leaving her body in a closet in this house at 1620 Avenue T in Inslee. That's the last place LaSandra Smith says she left her two-year-old daughter several months ago. Thursday, a judge ruled there is enough evidence to send Powell to a grand jury. But Powell's attorney says the state's evidence is weak at best. Oh, he's not guilty. I mean, I mean, I think you can see that. I just wish we can try this case tomorrow so we can get it over. The state, of course, disagrees. They think their case is strong. Meanwhile, the state did call two witnesses. The first, Detective Corey Hardiman of the Birmingham Police Department's Homicide Division. He says his case is based on several factors, which include the fact that the child's body was found in a bedroom closet in Powell's home. Hardiman also says the room where the child was found was blocked off and nailed shut by Powell, and he became angry when anyone questioned him about it. Then there was the testimony of this woman, Jacqueline Hawes Scarborough. She says Powell told her he hit Kateria Blackburn when she wouldn't stop crying and says he may have hit her too hard. Although a coroner's report shows Kateria was strangled to death, the child's relatives say they have mixed opinions about this. I didn't hear anything to satisfy me, to make me think that Mr. Powell is absolutely guilty. I didn't believe at first that Freddie Powell did, but right now I do. Now the grand jury will decide if there is enough evidence to send Freddie Powell to trial. They will likely get that case in February. Rod Carter, NBC 13 News. I, I feel and felt very strongly that I represented the majority here in Birmingham. Bernard Kincaid may have won the battle, but can he win the war? Tuesday night, he defeated interim mayor William Bell to become Birmingham's newest leader. But as mayor, can he defeat a city council of which the majority supported his opposition? And I would hope that we would be able to find those things on which we can agree and kind of set an agenda for progress for Birmingham. And if there is to be progress, then this must be the pain. Kincaid says problems like these can typically be linked to one area. The major impediment to our moving very smoothly has been the resistance of the office of mayor to have contracts reviewed and approved by the council. Mm -hmm. I'm part of that, that one of them done. And that is something he says he plans to work on, but the gridlock may not end there. The problems of gridlock for this council could actually get worse before they get better. That's because the council still has to pick someone to replace Bernard Kincaid's open seat. And with five members tending to trend the same way, it stands to reason they'll vote for someone who thinks along their lines. Council member Pat Alexander says the ball of change is now in Kincaid's court. Now it's going to be up to him to set an example that he wants to be a new leader and work together. Both sides agree the people of Birmingham should be the mayor and council's only concern. It does remain to be seen, however, if cooperation can overcome council gridlock. In Birmingham, Rod Carter, NBC 13 News. Has what some folks call madness in the Magic City political scene calmed down any? Most Birmingham citizens say they hope so. Now they are ready to hold newly elected Mayor Bernard Kincaid's feet to the fire. I'd like to see some changes in the school system and um, some discussion on the management of the school from the Board of Education. Education is a major issue, but by far most people told me they just want cooperation among city leaders. I've come to not expect a lot from politicians, because that way there's, you're not huge disappointments. What I would like to see him do, though, is, is bring about a more cooperative feeling in the city. I think the city is very divided. I just hope that he's able to implement the things that he wants to do and I hope he gets the help that he needs. One group of people that has high expectations of Mayor Kincaid are folks who ride the bus. The mayor promised to upgrade bus system, and these folks say they're going to hold him to it because they need it. There's times, especially on the weekend, when I need to ride the bus. Aside from buses, aside from unity and education, many folks say they hope for something new. They say they want a change in the way things are done at City Hall. They hope a new regime brings on a new era. In Birmingham, Rod Carter, NBC 13 News.
Saturday. Let's talk to the man himself. Uh, Sheriff, thank you very much for joining us this morning. He started the day talking with NBC 13 News. Afterward, Sheriff Jim Woodward, who after a year of court battles, reclaims the top county law enforcement spot, greets fellow officers. Then... It is my pleasure and privilege to present the Honorable Jimmy Howard Woodward, Sheriff of Jefferson County. Deputy stage a welcome back salute at the Criminal Justice Center. It included a 21-gun salute, which welcomed Woodward back. Chris Wilson is one of those officers. I think it's going to improve morale as well as the disposition of uh, most of the personnel of the Sheriff's Department. Woodward says he wasn't expecting this type of surprise. He says he didn't know officers were planning a party. I'm, I'm really touched by all of this. Uh, uh, it, it means a lot to me. Because I, I've known all along I had, I had the support of this department. Uh, and, uh, and, and this just shows you that I did. But the officers weren't the only ones with a surprise. I want to introduce you. This was Captain Carl Johnson. It is now Deputy Chief Carl Johnson. Uh, as effective today, he is, he is a Deputy Chief in this department. Newly appointed Deputy Chief Carl Johnson will take over running the county jails. I'm not a newcomer to the department. I've been here 26 years, but again, it's an honor to be able to be put in a position where you can help make some changes and, and implement changes that will make the department better. This move moves Johnson to third in charge for the department. After that announcement, it was off to the office for Woodward. Time to get back to the business of law enforcement. Take a look at this video. Kids from a Decatur, Illinois high school battle in the stands during a football game. Two months later, six students are expelled for a year. No weapons were used and many questioned the severity of the punishment. What if it happened here? Would a proper punishment be expulsion for a year or would suspension be enough? Dr. Johnny Brown of the Birmingham school system says it all depends. But obviously when they do occur, students have to know if there are consequences and the consequences in Birmingham City are pretty strong, uh, but generally uh, punishment lasts up to a year. Some say what happened in Decatur, Illinois is a classic case of zero tolerance gone too far. But is it? One local administrator says handling a situation like that in Decatur it's sort of like a catch-22. I think sometimes we're almost darned if we do and darned if we don't. Superintendent Dr. Bruce Wright says people will complain either way. We're absolutely expected and, and it is demanded that we provide a safe and orderly environment for our students, which we should. But uh, then on the other hand, uh, folks sometimes really pick apart um, the disciplinary measures that we take. In both districts, fighting is a class three offense with a mandatory suspension, not necessarily expulsion. But many school leaders say they would rather err on the side of safety. We're not going to, we're not going to back off from the, the serious matter. Bottom line, administrators say if there is an infraction like this one, there will be punishment. Now what that punishment is depends on how severe the situation is. Rod Carter, NBC 13 News. We're not doing this for our audience, we're doing it for a reason. With signs in hand, many teachers and support staff from Birmingham Public Schools took their concerns straight to Dr. Johnny Brown. Monday, they picketed outside the school board's central office. Not just about the money, the, the dollar signs, but the way the, the contract was handled, the way things were handled. A teacher, rise up. A teacher, a teacher. Rise up. These teachers are protesting a recent $30,000 pay and incentive increase package for Superintendent Dr. Brown. They say they will not set foot back into a classroom until that raise is rescinded. And I believe that uh, any discussions that we uh, need to have, we can have these discussions with everybody reporting to work. So I think the first issue is let's get everybody back to work, uh, make sure that our children do not le uh, lose uh, learning time. The struggle that's crippled the classroom has grabbed the attention of city and state leaders too. Senator E.B. McLean and Representative John Rogers met Monday with the superintendent. Not rescinding, just put everything on hold right now and get to the table. Anything it takes to get to the get to the table. But people on the picket line who are taking part in this work stoppage say the only thing they want to hear is pay increase rescinded. 
They say they are here for the duration. So the superintendent and the board is willing to negotiate for fairness in the system. The doors opened at 7 o'clock here at the River Chase Galleria. The line was long by 7.01. Hour and a half. What time did you get up? At 5 o'clock and my husband thinks I'm crazy. At this KB toy store, the hot item was anything Pokemon or more like anything at all. The name of the game is Speed. It's true, the early bird does catch the worm. I am a school teacher and a grandmother and here I am in line laughing at all these people behind me. The line into KB stretched throughout the mall. Even visitors to the Magic City got in on a little shopping action. I'm visiting relatives and I needed a Pokedex and I came in just for that and I've got a big old bag of stuff. You want to know what the interesting thing about this whole thing is? Once you're done standing in that long line outside, you finally get inside, do your shopping. You got to stand in a whole new line just to pay for it all. Talk about shopping till you drop. That is what this guy says he plans to do to his wife, make her pay for her early morning shopping excursion. I'm going to make her drop today. I did it last year, and I'm going to do it again today. <laughs> Shop till she drops. <laughs> exciting new money. This year's education seminar wraps up on Saturday and they reconvene here next year. And you can bet, unless there's some magic pill that comes from the state legislature or somewhere else, money will once again be a hot topic of discussion. At the Winfrey Hotel, Rod Carter, NBC 13 News. That's 200, ain't it? No, ma'am. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to a very special lady. This is Mary F. Pawsley. She celebrates her 101st birthday on the very first day of a new century. Born in 1899, she's lived to see her third century begin. Yeah, I remember when I was young. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of things like cars being built. And what you talking about? Cars, wagon, mules, and all. Mrs. Posley is still going strong, still taking care of herself, and enjoying the simple things in life, like fishing. Mm, we're back in Montgomery when I was kind of young girl. I would go to the creek by myself. We can all learn a thing or two from Mrs. Posley. She taught me something, never to take life for granted, never stop fishing. I thank the good Lord. And always serve God. On Birmingham's west side, Rod Carter, NBC 13 News.